Hey YouTube, this is Michael Kazmierski Dunn, if you guys don't know who I am. And welcome to another episode of Blind Piper Reacts. I think this is episode 11, if I'm not mistaken. So, I've decided to go a, a slightly different route than I'm used to. So rather than reacting to somebody, something that was recently sent to me, as it was the case with a lot of the pieces that the coolest girl in the world, i.e. Haley, uh, has been sending to me. Um, I did this before, but I haven't really done this much um, besides that. But I thought I would react to a piece that I actually discovered on my own, but just never thought to react to. Um, I've shown this piece to people before, and... I haven't really heard too many other people's reactions to it, but I'm going to react to it myself. So, in... I think it was the summer of 2019, I clearly remember it was 2019, I was looking for more good opera singers, right? So a lot of opera singers in the world have very slow, wobble vibratos, which is why I don't like most opera singers. And I was looking for versions of a French aria, um, it's called A Je Veux Vivre. Um, pardon my actual French. I'm not swearing, but pardon my actual French. I don't, I don't speak French, so... I'm definitely gonna have to count on my friend Sophia for guidance. Or maybe even I could have Haley count on one of her friends that speaks really good French. Um, so, when I was looking for versions of that aria, one of the opera singers I found was this opera singer named Emma Matthews. Now, Emma Matthews was born in 1970 in England, but moved to Australia. Um, I can't remember when she moved to Australia, but it's very amazing because she had an absolutely amazing vibrato up until, I would, I would want to say, 2018, maybe 2019. And... She's basically Denise Lee's sighted rival, okay? Like, whereas Denise Lee had, like, I think, the best singing voice in the world, like, ever, I think among sighted people, Emma Matthews would probably have to have the best operatic singing voice I've heard, among modern opera singers, okay? Um, the best opera singer in the world would be somebody that has an amazing vibrato like Denise Lee or Emma Matthews, which would mean a quicker vibrato, but a healthier quick vibrato. A lot of people hate quick vibrato and think it's wrong, but a quicker vibrato with a big volume variation in it, not just pitch variation, but pitch and volume variation, as well as the most amazing, uh, they're called roulades in the opera world, or scale scales or runs or whatever, because Christina Deutekom, who I've made a playlist, has literally the best scales in the world. And I also made a playlist of Emma Matthews songs, and so this piece actually can be found in that playlist. So anyway, I don't know much about this piece. All I know is that this composer was uh, Heinrich Proch, he's German, and he actually wrote an Italian piece, which is a theme and variations piece in the key of C sharp. It's called De Torna Mio Bene, which basically means return my dear. Um, in fact, I have a translation of the words. Um, so basically the words say, Ah, return, return my dearest, my tender love. Relieve the pain of this poor heart. Because of you, this heart has no more peace. Only with you, my dearest, can it be happy. That sounds familiar. You know what that sounds like? badly want a girlfriend just like Haley. And I don't know anybody else age that's age appropriate and likes opera, has perfect pitch, and is like a huge music enthusiast. I, I'm i sure there are some, but I wish there were a lot more easily accessible. Like, I wish there were, I wish they constituted more <laughs> girls in the world. Because I literally feel like Haley's like my last chance, and just because she's not interested in guys makes me think that the world is literally going to end. <sighs> Sorry, Haley, but 
literally after reading the words, this is how that it sparked that feeling yet again. I'm never going to find a girl I know I'm going to like compared to you. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on with it. I know I've talked too much, so uh, let's get on with it. It has kind of a long instrumental introduction, so um, we'll just wait through it. So here we go. And uh, the variations were separate recordings, so I just pieced them together. Ooh, C sharp seventh into a F sharp major, F sharp minor, C sharp. Wow. See, I have perfect pitch, you guys, and people with perfect pitch can't. People with perfect pitch seem to understand me a lot more than people without, like I said before. Ooh, there you go. Wow. Your vibrato is hot, Emma. As always. Hot. Seriously a hot vibrato. This is the theme, by the way. Ooh. Every note is addictive, vibrato-wise. She was 39 in this recording, by the way, so... I wouldn't expect her current voice to be as agile as it was. This is the first variation. Pretty good. Pretty good relogs, but not as good as Christina. Whoa. Big jump. Nice staccato, Emma. Nice staccato. Ooh. Ooh. I just realized I'm dedicating this to Haley. <laughs> just because of the translation. Sharp on that A. Gosh dang it, what octave? A5. A little bit sharp. Because I think she's tempted to reach a B flat when she's trying to reach an A. So here's the second variation now. <clears throat> Trills. Ah, portamento. Expressive. Ooh! Very few opera singers can do that, my friends. Are, are you serious? A two octave jump downwards? Wow. Keep in mind, Emma was the sixth soprano in history to perform this piece. If you guys want, if you girls want to be my girlfriend, you better develop a voice like that. And I can teach that to you. I can send you a YouTube link how to do that. Because you realize anybody can do that, right? Ah, portamento. That flute can't trill as fast as she can. Oh, ugh, ugh. Big jump. Big jumps upwards scare the heck out of me. Ooh, Queen of the Night-esque, uh, Rulads. Good staccato. Like, you hit the notes right on the head. Ooh. Big volume variation. So I think this is the third variation here. By the way, my friend Hannah Silvers will be... Will be my, my friend Hannah Silver will be proud to hear that I'm reacting to an Australian singer. Because she's Australian. Flat six. It's 
easy to name notes, but the octave number, it's a little bit harder. Because I wasn't a freaking music major. I wish I was a music major, but that's all my mom's fault. She's like, what you earn is more important than what you enjoy. Seriously? But then again, I would have had a, it had to. Ooh, good trill. Stupid friend Christian likes calling me at the weirdest times. Well, not stupid, but she's just so disruptive. But anyway, um, what was I gonna say? You might come back to me. Um, I I didn't have to endure all these. I wouldn't have had to endure all these wobbles because a lot of voice teachers had slow vibratos for people with music majors. So whoa, B flat three and a good trill. Wow. Whoa! Good staccato! Ooh. Okay. She only stepped up a little bit while the other instruments did a big jump, so a third... Third below, followed by a third above her. Wow. Trills! Haha! <laughs> I told you those who cannot trill... What the heck? F6. That tells me she can definitely do the Queen of the Night's Aria by Mozart. And by the way, she does do the Queen of the Night's Aria by Mozart. Um, you know, that aria is so addictive. I feel like reacting to another version of it, which I do have. So, the fifth, I think she's the fifth person in history to do this. Her name is, um, she's French. Her name is Madeline, and I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Madeline Marie Robin. She was born in 1918 and died in 1960 from cancer. Uh, I can't remember what type of cancer it was, but she was age 41. And she recorded this in 1957. So hang on while I find it. So this is, um, Madeline R Robin. She must have known Maurice Ravel being French, you know. I'm sure she's. Su I'm sure she must have sang a lot of Ravel. But despite being French, her Italian diction is very good. Molto bene. Here we go. And for 1957, the quality of this recording is amazing. Oh, it's live. I also discovered this in 2019. I think it was like September. <clears throat> it may be mono, but the recording is pretty good. Nice fundamental. You know, tonally, you sound actually a little bit like Haley, Madeline. What do you think, Haley? Do you think you sound a little bit like her tonally? I think so, a little bit. I hear a little bit of French influences in her, the way she pronounces words. Nice slide up to that A flat 5. You got vibrato even on your portamento. Awesome. This is the first variation, I think. Oh. She must be small. She, must, she took a breath in the middle. Ooh. I personally think Emma Matthews has a much better vibrato than Madeline. Staccato, except on that C sharp six, a little bit flat. Ooh, nice C six there.
she ended an octave higher than Emma in that variation. That's interesting. I think she misses variation two, so I think we're at variation three now. Yeah. Variation two must have been too hard for her. I don't think she would have handled that two octave jump downwards. Uh, those were live sound kind of rushed. Ooh, good staccato. Ooh. Again, nice staccato. Good E flat six there. Right on the head. That's not even a trill. That's just a vibrato. So to Madeline, doing a trill is basically a vibra the vibrato she has. Ugh, ugh, jumps. Nice staccato again. Holds that note. She can't trill, but her vibrato is amazing. Almost, almost getting there. That staccato's slow compared to Emma. And I'll warn you, Madeline likes to really go up really high notes, like makes up higher notes, higher than the score. So, you'll hear her go higher than Emma. That is definitely some charamella there. Ooh, nice portamento. Well, that's a wicked chord at the end. Like, wicked, like, fortissimo. <laughs> Wow. You are definitely some charmela. Well, in French it would be called the... Let me plug it into my French screen reader here. <laughs> Bombard. Bombard. I think it's Bombard. B-O-M-B-A-R-D-E. That's the French word for charmelle. Bombard. Bombard. But yeah, you, Madeline, you are definitely some bombard. <laughs> definitely. Debbie Deb definitely, as I like to say. Um, I thought of reacting to this piece because I thought it was vocally similar to Ravel's fiery aria that Haley sent me the other day, and I, which I, to which I reacted the other day. So, um, yeah, I bet the next, before, before Haley sends me another piece, I think I'm going to react next to Vorrei Spiegarvi Odio by Mozart. Um, I think I'll do Emma Matthews' version. I have plenty of versions of that one. I've got Elizabeth Parcells, I've got Emma Matthews, I've got Kathleen Battle, I've got Sabine Deviel, also French. I've got... Benita Valente, I got Beverly Hotch, and uh, I think those are it. I think I'll do Emma Matthews, though, because she's probably one of my favorites. So, if you guys haven't liked or subscribed, definitely feel free to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for um, really interesting things that a blind piper does, reactions to more music very obscure bagpipe music, and really all sorts of really interesting things that I find interesting, including Sardinian throat singing. So there you have it. Have a great day, everybody. Ciao.